Hey everybody, welcome back to It's a Metal Thing. Today I'm gonna to do ladder bars on my 61 Ford Falcon Gasser. Let's do it. Okay, so from what I understand, you start your string, plumb with the rear of the axle on the ground. You run the string up to the center of the engine at the camshaft height based on the front spindle. That gives you what they call the neutral line or the anti-squat line. So you adjust your suspension by moving that pivot point up or down uh, from the anti-squat line or the neutral line to get it to do what you want it to do, either squats or it separates. So I didn't understand all this before I even started building this car. I don't know anything about ladder bars. I'm just trying to do as much research as I can and build it the best way I can. There's a couple of guys, one guy builds gassers, another guy does race car suspensions. I've been looking around at other stuff and uh, this is what I came up with. I'm not sure if it's right, I'm not sure if it's wrong, but from what I can figure out, uh, this is what I'm going with. So uh, the plan is to run a 48 inch long bar and it has to intersect with this squat line. So I got some brackets coming I got some Heim joints and everything coming. Uh, I'm going to put that bracket up underneath there, see where I land, figure out the length on this bar and uh, get those bars going. So that's next. My ladder bar brackets finally came in. Uh, competition engineering, I went with these for a couple of reasons. One, the hole placement. With the car as high as it is and uh, the ladder bar running where it needs to run, I couldn't or didn't want to run one where the hole would be up higher or lower, this is gonna work out good in relationship to the rear end and the uh, neutral line or the anti-squat line where I think it needs to be in relationship to the length of the ladder bar. So this hole here is really the determining factor being that it's close to the tube where it needs to be, where I want it to be in relationship to the height of the car and all that. So uh, this is a different size that I need. It's obviously a universal situation I need to make this hole a little bit bigger. I'm gonna fudge it toward the top because I do need a little more room. I want this to come down a little bit. I'm gonna to try to mount it underneath the frame rail. I'll show you all that later, but so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a circle or do something, figure out some way to draw a circle on here. And I'm going to just grind this out and get the radius that I need, the hole size that I need, but I'm going to fudge it up. I'm gonna have the bottom, uh, be flush there and have the circle go to the top. I'm gonna make this a little thin, but I think it'll be all right. We've got a 360 degree weld. These will be welded in here. Another reason I'm with this uh, bracket is uh, I think I'm gonna mount there, or I can mount the shocks off of the back here. Come off here with a tab. It'll be tidy and clean and uh, it'll work good. So first things first, get a compass, draw a circle, get on here, draw it on here and uh, get this enlarged and then get up underneath there and clamp it on and show you what I'm up to. Got this opened up, open these up to five eighths. Gonna stick it underneath the car now. It's like it fits on the tube, good. Uh, gonna get underneath the car, going to clamp it together, level it off the back here, uh, tack it to the rear end housing, to the tube, axle tube, and then I'll be able to mount up my heim joint, uh, get a piece of tubing on there, figure out where I'm gonna land on the uh, neutral line or anti squat line, see if. I'm even close, so I'll do that next. Ladder bar mount, tack together, square it up, parallel with the frame rail, in line with the frame rail. I'm gonna mount the uh, ladder bar to the frame rail itself. Uh, got a piece of pipe that I had that was really close to the same size as the chromoly. Hogged out the end so I could fit the heim joint in there. Bolted that up, got this uh, upper tube level with the ground. Took this, uh, Framing with this tri square, lined it up at the center of the tube, put a mark on here, brought it back to my neutral line, took my framing square, ran it off of the uh, ladder bar tube, lined it up here, put a mark on the ladder, upper ladder bar tube. That's going to be where my pivot point's going to be. I'm going to take this out, uh, figure out the measurements I need to accommodate the front pivot, and uh, cut a piece of tube tack it in and put it back in here and then see what my situation is gonna be with my front mount here. 
I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna probably finish the mount itself, get it up underneath here and see what kind of length I have for the shackle. I don't want it too short. So if I have to, I might even um, mount the shackle in the frame rail, which will require some a tricky shackle, but we'll figure out, we'll see where we're at. So right now, take this off, measure it, cut it, put it together, get it back underneath there, and figure out what I'm gonna do on the upper mount. All right, now that I have this in here, I am concerned if I put the mount underneath, it's gonna make this too short. It's gonna be a shackle on there, and so obviously as it travels, it's gonna move forward and back. And um, the shorter it is, the more uh, angle it's gonna introduce as it travels. The longer it is, the less angle it'll introduce. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll hole saw a hole in here and I'll mount the, I'm gonna mount the um, pivot in the frame rail, fully weld it up, put the bushing through the frame rail. And I'll have to uh, do something with the shackle to make it wider to accommodate. So this is inch and three quarters, it's two and a half. So I'm gonna be almost like three inches wide off of coming off of here. So I'll make some spacers in here or something for that. But uh, I think the longer pivot will be better overall just for uh, pinion angle and stuff changing as it goes through travel. I don't anticipate this thing traveling a whole lot. You know, rear suspension that works well shouldn't move more than like an inch one way or the other. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I just hope this works. So <laughs> I'm sure I'll hear all about it somewhere along the way. Anyway, moving forward. All right, making some bushings um, that this is going to work off of. So I need something that's going to mount to the frame. I have some, I don't even remember what this is, two inch, I think, uh, Delron or UHMW. I can't remember. doesn't matter. I have a tube for the inside. I have the tubes cut for the outside. I'm basically going to duplicate what we have going here, a big, bigger diameter. Though. Tube on the inside. This is going to be for the outside. I'm going to make a two-piece bushing with the sleeve in the middle for the bolt. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, clean these up, get the all squared away, smoothed up, so I can measure the bore. I'm going to just turn down this first little section half of the distance that I need. I'll, I'm going to drill a hole, turn it down, slide in here, cut it off. Do, do that four times. Make this fit inside. Make this fit inside here. It's not rocket science. Let's do it. Bushings are done. Going to get a inch and three quarter hole saw, lay out the frame, uh, weld this in, tack it in, and then uh, figure out the shackle part, the pivot part, the mounting part, whatever you want to call it. So that's next. All right, like that. So I took my square, frame square off to here, center of the hole, drew a line, went up inch and three eighths, inch and three quarter hole saw, this tube is an eighth inch long, so it sticks a sixteenth proud. I can just get a fuse that in with my TIG, get a nice fit in there, nice and clean. Uh, I know you're thinking, why would you make a hole in there? It's gonna weaken the frame. This tube is three sixteenths wall, two and a half by five. The reason I went five is because I wanted to stick up in the car. It actually sticks above, up, up in the car. This is five inches all the way back, so it's not an issue. Plus it's gonna be an 850 cage in here. It's welded to the body completely it ain't going anywhere so i don't want you to know crying for many of you it's plenty strong so i need to figure out a shackle situation i'm calling it a shackle for a better part of you know, for any other reason no better description just a pivot point if you will it's long enough now i don't have to worry about uh changing a whole bunch of pinion angle or getting any rock out of it i was worried about it being short and doing some weird stuff um so get this welded in get the bushing in, figure out what I'm gonna do for the pivot. I need to go get some longer bolts uh, since I did the change of plan. These ended up being three inches. So uh, this is inch and three quarter. I have to do something down here on the bottom to make up that gap, whether I do a spacer or kick the arm or do whatever I gotta do. I'll figure something out, but uh, yeah. So that's next. Like that. So I fused it together. Uh, ground it flat with a flappy wheel. You can see it's not ground down good. That's no big deal, I'll fix that later. Cleaned up the inside, buffed it up with the uh, buffy wheel. Uh, bushings in, everything's right. Uh, now I just gotta make an arm to connect the two. Uh, so 
would it, if I have to do some adjusting on the rear end to help the squat or the anti-squat or the separation or whatever, I'll, I can make a new arm. I'm not limited by the holes. If you get a regular bracket or whatever, it has three holes. Well, you got a five-eighths bolt in there, plus you need at least a half inch or whatever. So you're talking about inch and a half or two inch difference between the holes. So you're kind of, you know, limited where I can mess around with this one and make different lengths. It could be a half inch shorter, it could be an inch shorter, it could be half inch longer, quarter inch longer. I don't know if I'm gonna get that carried away. Uh, once this thing runs nines, it will. I'm gonna run one nine and then I'll probably be done. But uh, it'll be easy to switch, able to, easy to change around with the tires or whatever. So anyway, so I'm just gonna make some way to connect this. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. I got some ideas for later on, but for right now and getting this thing set up, getting the uh, bars built, I'm just going to make a piece of flat bar that goes in here, make some spacers. I was thinking about maybe I could uh, push this, this sleeve out, make the sleeve long enough, however long this is, it's like, ended up being like two and seven eighths, make a two and seven eighths sleeve that goes in here, and then I could just bush on each side. I think that'll be better, be more stable than just sandwiched together. I think I might do that. I might see what it's going to take to push this out. I don't think it'd be that big of a deal. Make a new one for the inside that's two and seven eighths, and then uh, just make some... UHMW spacers for either side. And I think that'll be the best for what I'm doing right now. Artwork. So this is gonna be the layout. I'm going to go ahead and kick it in. I think it's gonna look weird and bulky. And honestly, uh, I'm going to, I was thinking eventually if this works and I'm happy with the way it looks, I might make this out of a piece of aluminum, billet, a solid piece. It'll just be better. Uh, so this, is going to pivot here, actually this direction here, it'll look like that. This fits here, these are uh, ID dimensions. This tube, which is the representation of the tube that I have, will go here. Uh, I have to drop this down for the frame, right? So the pivot point's here. The frame ends probably here, but I need movement uh, b before this kicks in for the it to move, to pivot. So um, this is gonna be just the outside dimension. I'm coming down here. Going here, going here. This is the, I'll um, be able to reference off of this, get the whole placement. This is running a little long. Obviously I'll put, make a radius at the top. It's run long down here, I'll make a radius at the bottom. I might even from the side view, uh, taper this a little bit. I'll put a filler piece in here because uh, the bends obviously are gonna make it weaker. But eventually I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just getting a chunk of billet and making a billet piece. It'll be paint and stuff, it won't be all billety looking, but It'll be a solid chunk. I think it'll work better, but I want to test this idea first. So I got some coal roll flat bar. I'm going to start cutting pieces, uh, laying it out, putting the bends in it, drilling holes, uh, just going to make a bracket and see how it goes. Let's do it. Like that. I decided not to go with the straight and run in a big spacer. Uh, that would be too clunky. This should work. Hopefully it didn't shrink up too much. I can still get it on. I'm gonna let it cool off and uh, get up underneath the car. Bolt it up there and hopefully everything lines up and jives up and works. So we'll do that next. All right, it's in. It's stout. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I think it's pretty heavy duty. Uh, so basically what this is is a torque arm connector. These aren't really ladder bars. They got a ladder bar shape. They don't do what ladder bars do. Typically on a ladder bar or four link, the front point here is what drives the car forward. The way the power of the rear end and push of the car is transferred through the rear end into the front bar here. The coilovers or the coilover springs don't really do anything other than suspend the car. What's different about what I'm doing here is uh, this, this point here is what's gonna drive the car forward. This will help with the weight transfer. It'll lift the front of the car, push down on the rear end, vice versa, whatever. One does just the opposite of the other. So this will actually push the car up or transfer weight. And the pivot here will push the car forward, in my theory, right? So torque arms work, this should work. I have this arm as long as it is uh, because as the rear end goes through its travel, the spring springs, the rear end moves backwards. I have it a little forward here at the bottom uh, than this, right? Because as it goes, it'll want to move back. The adjustment on the bar is all the way in or pretty close all the way in. I can take it back a little bit, but I don't think there's any need for that. So I can go forward more if I have to, depending on how much travel happens through the travel of suspension. It's long enough that 
it shouldn't really affect the pinion angle at all, no more than the little bit of wrap that you would get in just a regular leaf spring with a, maybe a cow tracks. You're still gonna get a little bit, but it should be all right. So that's my theory and um, sticking to it. Like I said, this is pretty heavy duty. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So next now is the lower bar. Gonna, I got the, uh, I got a adjustable, well, it's right there. So I can adjust the angle of the bars later if I need to. Like I said earlier, if it's not crazy, if it's not crazy off, I'll just run it like it is. But if I need to adjust it one way or the other, I can make a new arm, which will be a hassle, but it'll be doable. So uh, yeah, get the, get the lower bar in place, measure it, see how it goes, coop it out, get it tidy up in there, tack together and put a brace in and then this side will be done. And then all that's left is the other side. So uh, yeah, next bottom bar. Lower bar in, tacked in, fit, ground, cut, cut on the bandsaw off the start and then just whittled on it, got it fitting in there. So now I need to put a brace in here somewhere. Not gonna sure if I'm gonna run a sheet metal brace, maybe a hole in it, decorative, or run a piece of tube. Tube's gonna be harder, just getting that notch right. I got a tubing notch right here somewhere I gotta find. It's been a minute since I used it. I'm gonna think about that, figure out what I'm gonna do. So that's next. All right, I got my notcher out. I've had this for a while, a long while. Um, I just it had this already set in, I think it's like 32 and a half degrees. I, I'm not 100% sure, it's been a minute since I've even used this thing, but it's this top line, which is square with this, I'm assuming, is set at 32 and a half. I'm gonna go off of that. So what it is, I had this piece of tubing laying around, or left over, this is the short section, and I just notched the end, right? And then when I got up there earlier, I was trying to figure out what kind of length, so I just grabbed this magic marker and kind of just stuck it up there, because this doesn't, it's not like, it doesn't have to fit anything, just gotta be in the right spot. So I figured this was the length. So I notched this side, I made about the same length as this uh, marker, which ended up being like five and a half. So I'm gonna just put this up in here. And so this angle, I was gonna go this way a little bit, but the angle's not quite enough because this angle's down. So I'm running it off of the top here, which is gonna give me the angle that I need. I'm just gonna mark the backside there. It's gonna give me some sort of reference on the angle. And then I'll uh, figure it out with an angle finder I'll figure out with the angle finder and I'll just put the other notch in there. Cause I want to end up back here toward this near the, the, the uh, adjuster here. And then I'll end up you know, almost halfway in the middle of this bar. So it's not super critical just as long as both of them are the same. So I'm doing two at the same time. So I'll um, make them the same length and everything's cause these bars are obviously gonna end up the same. So uh, I'm just gonna make two of these at the same time and um, just guess at the angle and hopefully get it right. If not, let's do a little massaging with the grinder and get that done and tacked in there. All right, so I got my mark on here. I got this angle finder. I just set it on here and align the line up. It looks like about 40 degrees. So I came over here and set my angle at 40. I'm gonna put this in here, make sure you're going the right direction, parallelogram. And uh, I'm gonna cut it up, see what we get. Ladder bar done, tacked together. Uh, fully weld it later. I'm just gonna probably put some more tacks on there just to make sure it still stays where it's supposed to stay. Back brackets tacked on. Gonna wait till the very end. Make sure check all the pinion angles. Make sure everything's all square and straight before I weld that on. The good thing with that bracket, that's a competition engineering bracket. Uh, it goes all the way around the rear. It's 360 degrees. So when you weld it, it shouldn't cause too much uh, bowage or pulling as long as you do it carefully. Uh, other brackets that I see just mount on the front only typically and that'll definitely pull your tube if you put them on there hot. So that's a bonus. Another bonus on that too is I can mount the rear shock off the back, which I've talked about before. So these ended up 48 inches. That length is uh, determined by the neutral line. Uh, before I started building these, I was, before I started building the car, I knew I was gonna do ladder bars because just it's uh, how gassers are. They got ladder bars, they look cool. I knew I was gonna run a, a uh, leaf spring rear end is old school. I want this car to, like I say, look like an old gasser when you see it in the parking lot or driving by and then 
when you get up close, you'll see it's not. I think it's more like a, I want to say it's like a resto mod gasser. Anyway, so uh, neutral lines, squat, anti-squat, all that stuff. I don't know how you would do that with bot uh, ladder bars. I don't know how you would get that to work. So that's another reason I picked that bracket is because the, where the placement of that hole was going to be. I, I, before I even thought about or ordered up any material, I had the tube, but before I ordered the Heim joints and the bracket, I did the neutral safety line or the, the neutral line and I kind of got an idea where it was going to land, how long it needed to be and where it's going to go. So that bracket worked out perfect. So yeah, uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some grief. Maybe, I don't know, who knows. Uh, I got into a discussion one time with a guy, a guy posted a picture on one of the forums about uh, where to get in, uh, insurance and his whole back end was open. You could see he put the brackets on upside down and I, I don't, I don't think the bracket makes a difference. I think what makes a difference is where the pivot point is on that front. So that's my opinion. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Uh, quick uh, public service announcement. I had a bump on my nose. I just turned 61 a couple days ago. Uh, I've been welding over half my life. Uh, a lot of closing my eyes and tacking and a lot of UV rays and you know, turning your head and all that stuff that old dudes do. <laughs> I don't know the younger generation is going to be any better at that, but pay attention to your skin. Watch out for bumps and lumps and scabs and weird shit that is just weird shit. I mean, we all get old and lumpy, but pay attention to the old lumpy stuff because it could turn into cancer. I uh, knew a guy, his dad got some melanoma under his thumb. It's a bad skin cancer melanoma. They took his thumb, took half his hand, part of his arm, then his whole arm, ended up dying from it. So. Skin cancer is no joke. So just you know, pay attention to that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna end this video here. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe, check me out on Instagram. And uh, maybe roll bar next? I don't know, we'll see. I keep saying that. In order for me to get the roll bar in, I gotta put that cart back underneath there and get it all squared up and level up and move it back out of the way so I can get to the bolts in the floor for the bender. But uh, I don't know, we'll see. Catch you on the next one.